Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable K. KSM show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, folks. We're back again, and let me tell you why this show is an extraordinary special show for me. You know, every now and then I, I, I have great guests, period. But every now and then I run into guests that I consider outstanding. They are, they are guests that are worthy to be celebrated. And today, my guest is one of them. And I'll be talking about her soon. But before I even get there, I want to welcome. Vanguard Assurance. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Give it up for Vanguard Assurance. Vanguard Assurance is now proudly associated with the KSM show. From now on, we'll be talking not about Vanguard. They have amazing products. And you'll be understanding why they're a world-class insurance company. And we'll be doing that as the weeks go by. You'll get to meet them. So welcome one more time to Vanguard Assurance. <laughs> Thank you. And by the way, before the show ends, uh, you know we have Benetton giveaway. Thank you very much, Benetton, for the amazing gifts you've been giving to us. And we've given them away. And before the show ends, we're going to be announcing all the winners for the giveaway. Now, let's come back to today. My guest, I think she first came on the show on uh, January 18th, 2018, if I'm right. Yes. And at that stage, when she came on, she had stage four of chronic kidney disease. And I'm telling you, when you get to stage four, when it comes to kidney disease, and you get to stage four, man, you're getting near to the end of uh, complete damage to your, to your kidney. But this lady had so much vim, she had so much vigor, she was so vibrant. And when she came at stage four, I was amazed. I'm like, are you at stage four kidney? Well, mm -hmm. That was 2018. She's been gone. She's gone through so many things. But she's back again today. We're going to celebrate her. Show some love, man. <laughs> so we're going to take a small commercial break. When we come back, it will be my pleasure, it will be my honor to introduce our guest, Abigail Ashley. Stick around. We'll be right back. The KSM Show. Well, thank you very, very much to Binatone for the wonderful giveaways, man. And the winners who we picked from YouTube are, we have Haj Mawe, and then we have Abna Mamle, and finally, Farouk Sumana. You are the winners for YouTube, and we want you to call the number 054-954-4462. And for those of you who send WhatsApp, the winners are all the way from Kumasi, we have Al-Hassan, and the next person is Hakuna Matata. Well, people said this was a very easy question. The first question was very easy. So next week, we're going to ask another question with more prizes to come. <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're back. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> it's so good to see you. I was happy to see you again. Oh, wow. And, and, and I, I can't forget your vibrant smile. Your smile is infectious. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about that because you have a, a foundation called Behind My Soil Smile Behind Foundation. Soul. Yes. With a foundation that is aimed at helping those with kidney infections. Tell me a little about that before we, we continue. Foundation. Well, basically, you know, kidney disease is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So me, I can't, I, I can't give you any money. So what I do is more on education, education, mm. education. And mm. for those uh, with chronic kidney disease, I try as much as possible to help them. You know, sometimes they need someone like them to talk to them because mm -hmm. it's only the one who mm -hmm. has been through to really understand what they are going through. Mm -hmm. So I always I give them the pep talk they need. And so basically. Mm. That's what I do. Mm. And I'm glad you mentioned this, that people who have been through what they are going through or mm -hmm. been through what yeah. they've been through. Yeah. The last time you came on this show, you had reached mm -hmm. stage four in kidney, is it yeah. CDK, yeah. chronic kidney uh, disease? And you stage had reached stage four. four. Yes. And stage four is like, 
I'm sorry to say death, yeah. eh? Beyond stage four is death. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but Abigail, you have the strength. And I want you to tell me a little bit, because you didn't have any symptoms of kidney disease. When, yeah. when it finally hits you and you went to hospital and they told you you were at stage four, was that, was yes. that what happened? Yes. Yes. That, tell me a little bit happened. about it. Yeah. I hear you just had some headache symptoms. I remember you mentioned that. Yes. And then what happened? Basically, yes, it, it, it depends. Um, sometimes you have a symptom. Other times, no symptoms. It just strikes you like that. So um, for now, we're still also trying to advocate that people should do the regular medical checkup because mm -hmm. you don't know which type, which category you may fall in. Someone will be at stage four, one or two and may have some symptoms. Mm -hmm. Someone will be at stage three and will have some symptoms. But mm -hmm. like me, I did not experience any so symptoms at no all. No symptoms at all. Nothing, nothing at all. It and yet you were diagnosed at stage four. four. And stage four by like that, it just hits me. It just hits wow. me suddenly. Just one morning, I woke up, I couldn't breathe well. And then later in the night, I started coughing blood. And, and then that was it. You were coughing blood? Hospital. Yes. I was rushed to the hospital and I was diagnosed. So the doctors were asking me, didn't you experience any symptoms? I said, no, I didn't have any symptoms. I was it's just a regular headache. I was having, and we treated it like a, a regular headache. Hmm. There was no swelling, there was no swelling of face or feet or nothing. There was nothing. It just hits me just like that. Now, how, how, how severe were the headaches? Were they just regular headaches that you could pass away as just stress, or these were continuous headaches that, that raised cause for alarm? Exactly. It was just this regular headache, then I take a painkiller. I remember mm. one time ago, I was just telling one doctor, oh, this painkiller is not working, so give me another painkiller. Mm. And they keep changing the painkillers for me. And like, today you have a, a headache, maybe in a month's time or two months' time, the headache will come again. And from far not, you know, and our, everybody was always stressed from work, stressed because I was in the media at that time. Mm -hmm. and you know how they juggle, waking up early at dawn, going home later. So everybody thought it was because of the work stress that was giving me the headache. But mm, I didn't know mm. those headaches were also maybe some signs that was alerting me. Maybe something was happening with him. Yeah. I didn't take it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was when you got to that point where you were actually vomiting blood mm -hmm. and that's when they took you to the that, hospital that, and they... Yes, that's why that's when I decided to go to the hospital. And then that's when I was quickly dying. The doctor said, your BP is too high. Why? You are running, your BP is skyrocketing. And then they have to run other tests. And then they run the test and they realized that, hey, end stage for chronic kidney disease. And they were asking. Wow. All of them was like, didn't you have any symptoms? Wow. I said, no, I didn't. And when they, I didn't have any puffiness or swelling face, nothing, nothing. Wow. Absolutely mm -hmm. no symptoms at all. Absolutely no symptoms. Absolutely no symptoms. Wow. So how did you take it then? So you, you go in there, you have just regular headaches, you have no symptoms, and then you're hit that you have kidney, chronic kidney disease, stage four. Mm -hmm. And how did you handle it? What, how, how did you process that whole <laughs> information? <laughs> it, 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 but it, when the doctor said it, I was just looking at him because I didn't understand what he was trying to say. Wow. And later he took his time to explain what the... What did, what did he say when he was explaining? <laughs> he said, you have, after looking at the lab, and then he said, you have chronic kidney disease. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> wow. And then he took his time to explain, oh, chronic kidney disease has, means that your kidney has been diseased for some years now. Mm. And he didn't know. And so it has reached a stage that you need um, the dialysis machine to mm. help you process. You know, normally, and then he was asking me, how was my urine output and things? I said, hmm, once in a while, you know, you, you don't really care. You don't really consider all those things as part of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. He was asking me. And then later I realized, okay, so if you are not urinating, you know, you wear your trousers. You so, wear so you were you urinating? Yes. yes. You weren't. Before you, before you come back to the house, rush to pee. So you mm -hmm. thought, oh, media, media means just stop. Me just thought to me, shame me, it's not normal. Wow. Wow. Those were wow. all symptoms that I should have not, I should have taken notice of, but I didn't know. I didn't know. 
So you just assume, so you know, you're in it and uh, no, you yeah, yeah. that's all. <laughs> now, let me ask you, was it that you didn't even feel like you're in or you could just hold it even when you felt like you're in What was it? I could just hold it even when I feel like you're in it. I, I think I, I don't even, I wasn't even feeling like you That's the issue. But I see. It never, it never tricked me that it's it, 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 something that was wrong with me. I, mm -hmm. I, I never thought of it that mm -hmm. way. I never thought of it that way at all. So wow. after the doctor has explained, now your kidneys are shut down, so you need a dialysis machine, and so you be able to pass the way, you do this, you do that. And he kept talking, talking, and I just and broke I, down into tears. If, I, if I remember talking. well, your shock came when they told you how much it will cost to go through treatment. Uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what, how much did they say then at that time? At that time, they used to charge dollars. Mm. Because it was mm. really new. I remember the first time I entered the dialysis room at Kolebu, the Rena unit. They had mm -hmm. only 10 machines. They mm. had only 10 machines. And they were charging dollars. And it was around $100 at the time. Wow, per because session. They said they had you have to bring the things down, blah, blah, blah. They were talking plenty. And it was then hundred dollars at the time. And wow. what really um, shattered me was when I saw one man who has actually been on the machine for a while. He didn't have money anymore to continue with this pot belly in front of him. And Ooh. he was gasping for breath, you know, because the body has accumulated a lot of fluids and he's trying it difficult to even breathe. And you see mm. man as if he's spread down by his not like no, it's so it like was a huge belly. Reflex, yeah, huge belly, and it was shiny. He has actually taken his shirt off because him, so the shirt is not fitting. So the shirt Wow. Was and what was going through your mind then? The you were like, Am I gonna get like this? What was going through your mind then? As soon as I saw it, I was like, doctor, please, I don't have the money for this treatment. Is there wow. any other way? Hmm. Is that the, the same way I told the doctor? I told him, I don't have money for this treatment. Is there another way? The doctor said, well, it's not really a way, but you can talk to the dietitians. Maybe you can modify your diet a bit and hmm. see if it can see you. He used the word and see if it will help you. Hmm. In other words, if you can't go through that dialysis and pay all that, the yes. only other yes. option you had was through nutrition? Yes. Changing your you diet? Change, change, you change your diet. Mm. Because he explained that at the moment, the kidney is not working. And mm. when you put too much stress on it, it will break it down totally. Mm. You know, and so I have to opt for the diet because that was the cheapest Okay. That, I mean, that was the cheapest because okay. I, I, I don't I, I, even if I start the dialysis, I don't, I'm not sure I will be able to continue. And looking at that man, I don't want my tummy to be like that man. So that one was <laughs> that's what really helped. <laughs> scared you, huh? Now uh, it wasn't an option for me at all. Wow. So I went to the dietitian and well, they said okay, take salt off your diet. I said okay, I'll try. For for and the benefit, of, but for the benefit of those who are listening. Who may mm -hmm. have yes. a little bit of kidney problems? I want you to yes. really take your time yes. on this. So you're supposed to take yes. salt off your diet. Salt off your diet. Because salt also puts pressure on the kidneys. You know, mm -hmm. once it enters the body, the body has to try and wash it away. That's why mm. when you urinate, you take, it tastes more like a urine. But the body takes it off from the body. Mm. The body that, it needs it. It doesn't need more. So the body has to raise the excess out of the system. Mm -hmm. so, so salt and then number two? Salt out of soda, and salt is not only in salt. All the carbonated drinks, all the canned food, all they the processed food, they also have salt. So those ones too, you have to eliminate. So you're talking about sardine, diet. corned beef, tuna, the whole gang. Everything canned, everything processed. Hey. Wow, <laughs> wow! All beef everything beef, in the can. Beef, cheese, meat pies, ice cream, all of them out of your diet. Wow. And then you have to cut down on red meat if possible. Just do your fish. Mm. You do your fish and then your oils. If you're able to cut them down, you'll be fine. And then you also told me about my water intake or fluid intake. Water intake? Um, I, yes, the fluid. I, I call it fluid because when you take water, it's not only water. Your soup, your breakfast, 
like your porridges and your tea. They're all, all they considered do. as part of the water intake? They are all, all, yes, they are all considered as water intake. And do you need so to take you more have, or less? Less. Because okay. the kidney is not able to well, bring the excess out of the system. So mm. the more you put it inside, the body will accumulate. So you have to reduce it. So I was given um, 500 ml, the small bottle. 500 ml of water, which includes my breakfast if I want to take tea or porridge, which includes my soup if I want soupy food, and then it also includes my water. So the 500 ml, I have to manage it for the day. So is that a day, a day, because you don't need too much. <laughs> and wow. I asked him, Is that all? He said, Yes. In the beginning, it was difficult eating without salt, it wasn't normal. But first day, second day, third day, I realized. Hmm, I could breathe well. Hmm. All of oh, so it affected your breathe. breathing already? Yes. yes. Improved it? And I, 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 I altered it. As soon as he told me, I realized that, okay, it's working. So, first day, I was checking, okay. Second day, I tried. Third day, oh, oh okay, it will work. It will work. Then hmm. I started to continue, and then I altered my, my meal. So, that's what I did. I altered my meal my bike, my water intake and everything. For, How long did it take, take to adjust the, the, the altered meal thing without, without salt? You don't have to, you have to eat very little. How long did it take to get used to it and it became a regular thing if, for you? If, if I picture the man with the big tummy, <laughs> ah, no one would tell you. <laughs> that was always your inspiration, eh? That was, I, I didn't want to, because, can be what he if I use what I have now to start, who will continue for me? I don't mm, know. Mm, mm. So I have well. to like do or die, do it, adjust your diet or so I adjusted it and once I saw it was working for me. I you held on. Okay. Abigail, yeah. check this out. It's getting so exciting. I know you adjusted mm. your diet, you did everything right, and yet you went into a relapse again. So we're going to take a commercial yeah. break. When we come back, okay. we're going to take it from there. Mm -hmm. Stick around, <laughs> folks. Abigail is in the house. We are talking about chronic kidney disease. She had reached stage four. We're going to come back. She's going to tell us how she handled it when, beyond everything else, she got under relapse. We'll be right back. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Cactus Creek, man. Well, it is now known all over the world as the most serene place you can think of. We are now having an amazing retreat for couples. Man, the place to go is uh, Cactus Creek a beautiful retreat in a serene area. And to make your reservation, we have some new numbers. And the new numbers are 0302-955-432 or 0302-965-460. I encourage all couples, man, this will be your best retreat ever. Cactus Creek. The KSM Show. Yeah. We're back, we're back, we're back. And I told you, today I'm hanging out with Abigail, man. Abigail, me she, She's a living symbol of strength, man. And we're going to go right back to her because after everything she did, watching her die, doing the, the right things, she got into another relapse. And what happened after that? We are going back to Abigail. Abigail, welcome back. Thank you very much. So, yeah, so after... You went on your diet and changed everything, your eating habits and everything. You got another relapse. Tell, tell me a little bit about what happened. What happened is that after two, okay, 2018, around somewhere, I guess, that's mm. where I had my relapse. Mm. Um, I started feeling weak again. And I, I started fainting. I could see my skin changing. It, it, was, it was getting very flaky. I see, you know, it's mm, like you could see mm. the flakes on my hands. Was it like and peeling? It, was, it wasn't peeling, but okay, I call it was peeling. You could just see peeling off. The skin was peeling off. Mm -hmm. And then you could even see blood clots on my skin. It, the skin is there, but you could see the black clots spots all over my skin. And it could be a very sunny day, but I would be feeling very cold. So I have like powder Freezing. myself so well, so I don't feel the mm. cold. It, it, it started getting worse. 
And um, and that, the doctors told me it's, it's, it's part of the process, you know. You try your best, but kidney disease progresses as time goes on. Okay, it's so in spite of the diet and everything, it was still progressing quietly? And, and what happened was that even the diet, the fruits and vegetables at the point also increased. My potassium level all escalated. Oh. The fruit and vegetable that was supposed to protect me now, it made my potassium level go high. So Be because from, you know, when it comes, I want to back it up. It to, yeah, <laughs> and, and potassium is not too kind with the kidney disease. No, no. And so the not, fruits and, and everything the, was increasing your potassium yes. level. Yes. Oh, okay. Point, I needed it. And at a point, too, I don't need it anymore. That's how confusing kidney disease is. <laughs> There'll be a point you need it. And at times, you don't need it. And when you don't need it, you, you, there's nothing the body can do about it. Mm. So, and then my blood level went so low. My blood level was like one, four. It's, 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 that's why I was fainting because my blood level keeps dropping. The normal, the so normal level should be what, nine? The normal level for a woman should be 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, Wow. 11. And it went yes. to, it went woman. down to. And I came all the way to one. So I just keep fainting. I just keep oh, fainting. Oh, wow. I, I just keep fainting. And then uh, my, like, my cholesterol, everything, everything was skyrocketing. And the doctors were like, Abigail, this time around, you yourself, you are feeling the pain. There's nothing you could do about mm -hmm. it again. You, you have to be on the dialysis machine, okay. whether you like it or not. Okay. Because so you have tried the diet I... instead of the dialysis, and the yes. diet even accelerated it at some point. So you had to go back, yes. back to dialysis. And yes. that was a hell of an experience, I was too. Away from now, I have to face it. <laughs> mm. I have to because there was the nothing I could do. Let me talk quickly about the experience. The needles, <laughs> they had to put like <laughs> needles into you. And they couldn't, <laughs> so they had to use your neck. Tell me about they that story. To, actually, you know, well, when, when you're going to have a dialysis, they have to get an opening for the arteries and the veins so that they could just so that they connect it directly to your heart. You know, the dialysis machine, you know, pump the blood mm -hmm. all the way to your heart and then give it back to you. And we tried, tried fixing the fistula for me. This is the first one I did. It did not work. And then came to the second one, it did not work. Third one, it did not work. And then the fourth one. Four, four, four attempts. Four attempts. Four times in the theater. Four <laughs> times in the theater. None of the fistulas work. And they were like, what's happening? And all of them, you believe, I keep paying. I keep paying. It wasn't free. You have to pay. You pay, they do it, and it doesn't work. You have to pay again for them to do it. It wasn't mm. easy. And it was... And it's painful, Jesus. It's very, very. It, it takes Oof. two weeks for the pain to go away. It's mm. Very, very painful. Very, very painful, and it's all just no way. So I had to get the neckline. So that was the neckline. It was here. So the, 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 yes. Was there. The neckline was here, and the neckline because of where it's been located, water shouldn't touch it. I saw a man who you know. Water got in and the infection. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So for for months or oh, for a year and a half, this how about half halfway. Just make sure water doesn't touch because it's actually open and it's hanging. So you have to buff out buff this way, halfway like this. So that water doesn't touch. So that I have to put a towel here and then I buff down and then come when I finish then I clean it with um spirits. So, wow. <laughs> if there is anyone around, the spirits will just clean it out for me. So, it's, 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 it's not an easy feeling. The experience on the dialysis machine is also an entire, an entire experience on its own. Mm. But in the end, I opted for it after how many years? 10 years, 11 mm -hmm. years, after mm -hmm. preventing myself from getting on that mm -hmm. machine. It, I always cry, and like they always tease me. Even to now, when I entered the dialysis room, the doctors were teasing me that I was crying when I first entered there because I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. Wow. So, but, and thank God, thank God, I had the support 
Yeah. From um, Dr. Dr. Sefa, I mean, despite Dr. Farisa Bond and Dr. Farad Exen, despite group of companies, they were always supporting me. I'm mm-hmm. sure if it hadn't been them, even convincing me that they would pay, so I should go and do it. I don't think mm-hmm. I would even go for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're like, oh, go, go. If, if that's what the doctor is saying, then please go. Don't they go about do the it. money. Who, who will sort you Go, go, go. They will sort you out. And Dr. Kwame Despa says, so, money is not the problem. I'll pay. <laughs> Money is not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Communicating with the doctors throughout mm-hmm. hours on the dialysis machine, asking if there was any other option. Since when I went to India, the doctors said they can't do anything about it. You went to Is India? Any... Yeah, I went to India in 2012. Yes, after after an interview with um, Kwame Sepakai on PCFM, and someone opted to um, take me there to have the dialysis, uh, have the transplant. But unfortunately, um, the, the, the Indian doctor said, Hello, Abigail, we can't do anything for you here in India. So just go back to Ghana, just go back to Ghana and continue eating your good food and see what God can do for you, okay? Whoa, so, <laughs> that's what they said. <laughs> That's what they said. So they were asking them if there is any, any other new technology that could be of help for me. And luckily, they said, yeah, they have these UK doctors who are readily available to come to Ghana anytime mm-hmm. with the support of the Ghanaian doctors to do a transplant. Mm-hmm. So if I'm interested, so they also came back to me because this is what the doctors are saying. If you are interested, just um, talk to your family, get a donor. If you mm. get a family, if any of the family members are able to help you, then we are also ready to support you. Oh, that okay. day, I just so went on my knee. We are talking knee. that at, at, at this just, point... I just, I just went on my knee and yeah. I couldn't help it to say thank wow. you to them. And to God be the glory, <laughs> they really tried for me, seriously. Wow. They really tried for me. So, so at this point... The, the money the, involved was... The money involved wasn't cheap at all. Yeah. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap. The procedure itself and mm. the labs, the labs you have to do before the procedure. Mm. Mm. From head to toe. Not you alone, you and your donor. And after we spent almost ten thousand dollars for the labs. Just the labs. Just the labs, because most of them were not run here. Most of them have to be gone. South, South Africa. Africa. Others have to go to England the, and things wow. before they have to come yeah. back for them to assess and agree. Wow. How how difficult was it to find a donor in the family? How how? Uh, I, I would say it's God's sent. Mm. I would just say it's God's sent. It's, it's just God's sent. Who agreed to be the donor? Who? Oh, a cousin of mine agreed to be a donor. A cousin of yours. A cousin of. Wow. Yes, the of <laughs> and I'm wow. forever grateful wow. to you. I mean, for coming out and say, sister, this is what I want. I want to do it for you. You know? Wow. Do you want to mention his or her name? Or she, they want to keep it private? They want to keep it private. Okay. Whoever it is, whoever it is, uh, bless God bless him. Bless I mean, thank God for, yeah. Yes, thank God. Thank God. Yes. Wow. So he finally decided he'll be the donor. At that point, I guess your kidneys were gone, eh? Were at stage no, one to five? they were gone. My EGRF was running 1%. Which means, Just for one. the ordinary, one. For the Which ordinary means, people... You know, the kidney has stages. Um, so when it gets to 1%, it means you are... You are. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, 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 there's nothing they could do against it. Just 1%. Mm. Mm. But thank God... Today, as I speak, <laughs> it's like new baby. All right. <laughs> wow, wow. Which, which yeah. is a good point to bring me because, um, Abigail, you, your book is called Behind My Smiles. Let me, I want to take a second. I want people to see the kind of smiles you have. I have some few photographs of you. So let's take a quick second. Look at these photographs of, of her beautiful smile. Take a look at this. <laughs>
the smiles. When she came on my show, she was at stage four. It was after that that she went to India, yeah. but she spoke yeah. with the same pleasant, beautiful smile, invigorating, infectious smile. How do you do this? Where do you get your smile from, Abigail? And you wrote a book about it, 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 Behind My Smile, which is even though I'm smiling, behind the smile, there is, should I say, Wahala? Massive. Wahala behind it, yeah. What, yes. How, how do you manage? What keeps you, your smile and your strength? Um, I think I have decided not to give up. Mm -hmm. And I've decided to fight to the end. Mm. And I realized that when you smile, you are, when you are happy, anytime you are happy, you, you, mm. you are not stressed out, you feel okay. So I decided to take that and apply it. Because when I become moody, I get sick. I feel sick. I feel I'm mm. sick. When, when I become moody, moody I, feel, yeah. I feel within me that I'm sick. And every, every part of the body just goes down like that. So when I'm smiling, I feel wow. rejuvenated. I feel okay. Wow. I feel, wow. though I know I have, I have the disease behind me, when I smile, I feel, I have energy. So, so I decided to go for that smile. I keep smiling. <laughs> That, that is beautiful. When you're smiling, yeah. it's energy and warmth yeah. and light, yes. by the way. Yeah, it enlightens me so much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It gives me life, yeah. It gives me life. Before I let you go, you have to tell me a little bit about the Behind My Smile Foundation. I know many people are listening now who are in some stages of, uh, of kidney disease that, will, that are happy to have seen you today with what you have imparted. How can they take advantage of the Behind My Smiles Foundation? Okay, so we are on social media now running. So what I do is, I know even as I'm talking now, I have a long list of people who need help. And mm. so what I do is like I told you, I can talk to you, I can share my story with you so that you also get motivated, mm -hmm. keep hoping and hoping not to give up. Just keep smiling, keep so proud. And but at the end of the day, they also need the money. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I try as much as possible, just put a little details about them and then post it on social media. And mm. I just want to thank everyone for supporting them. And I give their mobile numbers out. I just don't want to get myself involved with anything. Mm -hmm. So normally mm -hmm. give their Momo, Momo numbers out. And people really contribute to people help are them. supporting you back. Oh, I yeah. couldn't do. I couldn't do dialysis, but thank you so much. I've been able to go for dialysis now because I'm trying. Wow. I'm just doing once a week because the money is involved. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. As 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 as, as last month, I understand. I don't know whether the prices have gone up or not, but they are paying thousand six hundred, thousand six wow. um seven hundred just to go for dialysis for a week. So now people are doing it once a week. To reduce cost, it's supposed to be three times in a week for the body mm. to, you know, mm. have a healthy body. But because of cash issues, people are doing it once a week. People are doing it twice a week, and mm. it's expensive. It's, it's very yeah. expensive. And apart yeah. from the expenses you are paying, you yourself, you know, the stress you are going through within, everything is fighting you. And I think that fight that goes on within you, mm -hmm. nobody understands apart from a patient who has been there. When wow. you even say it, people will not understand unless wow. you someone who has been there can feel that pain for you. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's very stressful mentally, you know. Some it, it got to a time I wasn't thinking right, you know. The least thing you are so pissed off, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it affects you psychologically, physically, mm -hmm. like I told you, your skin, every just every part of your body is affected. And don't forget that the kidney is like the control room. Without mm -hmm. the control room, you will not be here on TV. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without yeah. them, they control everything. So it's like yeah. the control room of the body. Though we are not seeing it, that's the mm -hmm. beauty of the kidney. Mm -hmm. It doesn't only bring you in out, but it also helps the other parts of the body. It mm -hmm. helps the bones. Mm -hmm. It sends um, blood to the bone. You know, for for the bones, the brain, everything. Your feelings, your veins, everything. Your yeah, nerves, everything yeah. in the body is yeah. centered on the kidney. So that without yeah. the kidney. Nothing works. In Nothing works. Even your heart. Even yes. your heart. Because Depends. after the yeah. has processed and taking the waste out, it gives the good blood to the heart. And the blood pumps it to and fro in the body. So without the kidney, it doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah. please, ask a kidney disease. When it affects and you, please. 
And you yeah. never stop fighting, yes. You never I hear stop you. fighting. Even and I hear you. And before, 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 before I let you go again, <laughs> I know you've won three awards. There was one that you won for three years, back to back to back, from 2016 to 2018. This was award was for... Uh, when the health legend, yeah, health legend award, health and legends and award, yeah. and folks, she won the health legends <laughs> award <laughs> three, three years back to back to back for three years, and and I think everybody watching now can understand. <laughs> you say it's okay, my winning <laughs> but it's because of your 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 exuberance and 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 how you yes. keep positive. Yes. Yes, yes. Impact on health issues, you know. And I think that that's what God has put in on my heart to do, you know. Yeah. And using what I've been through to also help others. And yeah. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my yeah. best. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel don't listen. They don't listen, eh? What well, do they, they don't listen, listen to? They don't listen. <laughs> they don't listen. Wow. wow. Use this. Ah. They, they want, want to eat what they, they want to eat there. When they, when they are in trouble, they will just send you a WhatsApp message privately. Hey, Abigail, the last time you were saying this and that and that. So what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> Abigail, is there number you want to leave now? If people want to get in touch with you, those who are going through and, some... Or there's a number they can call or something? Yeah, we, we, we are on social media. Um, Instagram is Abigail Ashley 7 Yeah, so... What's, what, just what's the, the address message. again? Abigail Ashley 7 together. Okay. Abigail okay. Ashley 7. And then on Facebook, it's just Abigail Ashley. Um, just, you know, they know how to do it. They leave their messages every day in my inbox and my DMs. Mm -hmm. And I actually get back to them. And even after transplants, I'm still on medications. I'm you are. still on medications. Okay. And the medications doesn't come cheap. They don't come cheap. I see. So how long do you send the me medication after the, the transplant? Because the kidney is not yours. Okay. Naturally, it's not part of your body. So your okay. body is fighting it every now and then. So mm. you need the immunosuppressants to suppress that fight. Mm. So you always have to be on medications for the rest of your life. So the fight never ends. And I they're see. expensive. And they're expensive. Sacolimus. Go and ask of the price. Some people are selling six cities per tablet. You don't have to take five morning, five evening. Wow. And they, they, yeah, now by God's grace, because I'm adding the diet and things, they are reducing it small. So you know me and my diet here. Once I know yeah. there's diet, that can play some <laughs> I'm going to bring you on again and we'll just talk about nutrition, man. Definitely. I'm for you. Just nutrition. I'm for you. Because I know, I know you're working hard on that. To tell Ghanaians what plays, to eat, we are what to eat. It plays a vital role on our health. Mm. It plays a very vital role on our health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard this cliche. They say either you treat your food as medicine, or medicine will become your food. Some cliche like that, but it's so true. It's, it's so true. true. Yeah. It's true. If you don't treat your food as medicine, medicine will become your will become your food. Yeah. Abigail, thank you so much. I'm so Thank glad we so had the time too. to catch up with you. And uh, your it's smile, dear, I'll borrow small. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, KSM. I'm also very grateful and very honored to be on your show. Thank the you honor, so the much. The honor is mine. So One more time for Ashley, man. <laughs> you meet me an international star when you first interviewed me. I was having calls from US. London, oh God, international star. <laughs> really? <laughs> Fantastic. So we'll catch up with you again. Thank you. All right, folks, that was uh, Abigail Ashley, man. She's a fighter, she's a survivor. She first came to the show when she was at stage four at kidney disease. And today she's still alive to tell us about it. Thank God she got somebody to be a donor for her and blessings to whoever that person is to as well. But until we come back next week with another exciting show, let's show some love one more time to Abigail <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> and as we show them some love, I'll sign off and say, I am out of Let the whole world say, here. Yeah.
the KSM Show.